Mä synnyin sen kun mä olin 19 vanha. Mä vietin siellä ensimmäistä 16 vuotta elämästä, niin mä aloin skedeen, kun mä olin about 10 vanha. Skedeissä Suomessa ei ole aina niin helppoa, koska siellä on paljon vanhaa arkkitehtuuria ja vuosikaudet on tosi pitkiä ja vaihtelevia. Suomalainen talvi on säälimätä ja ankara. Siellä ei paljon muuta voi tehdä talvella muuta kuin hiihtää tai avantointi. Skedeeksi on Suomessa ei mun kohdalla ollut minkäännäköistä tulevaisuutta, joten mä päätin muuttaa Huntington Beachille California. The weather over here is ideal for skateboarding. It's warm and sunny all around the year, and it seems like there's nothing to worry about. People all around the world come to California thinking that they can skate all the famous spots that they've seen on the videos, but they don't know that you have to sit in traffic hour and a half every day to go to a spot. And most of the time you get kicked out, you get hassled by cops, you get tickets, or the place is already knobbed. More and more spots get ruined every day by skate stoppers or or some stuff they put in front of the stairs, the handrails get taken out. Everything is getting skate proved. But that's not gonna stop skateboarding because there's always new spots to be found or you can just hack the knobs off or whatever. You can make you can make spots skatable again. It just takes a little effort. I came to California to live the life that I dreamed of. Even though it's not the same that I thought it was, it's still great.
a fucking generator that went off and shit. And I like, give a shit. Bonjour, Fred. I'm still trying to think of this uh, intro to do for the video part, and I seriously, I can't think of any ideas. Um, I'm having a blank on this one. I think we should just shine it, you know, forget the intro. Put, uh, put my skate tricks in there, and I don't know, I guess that's it. I can't believe, like, since I went Prague, my life just changed so quick. I woke up with the good sponsors. I meet so many people. Started traveling so much. For me, it's crazy, like, it's like a dream coming true. For me, it's crazy, like, they sending me on film trips to Europe. For me, it's just crazy to be there. And it's scary for those guys, I used to be watching videos, like, Cossum, Penny, McCrank. And now, I'm getting a part in the same video. For me, it's like, it's unreal. And it's all thanks to Bob. Because if all his help, I wouldn't talk this video right now. But they're back. You, you, you make the paint, and, and make after... What? Make what? The paint. I don't yes. speak French. Why? I don't agree. You, you, you speak English? No, I don't speak no, French. No, I don't speak French. I don't it's, understand it's you. Not, yes. Yes, go back to Brazil. I, I found to the police. Yes. Oh, police. Immediately, so I found to oh, the Oh, yeah, that's my friend. Yes. Yo, what the fuck? What's <laughs>
I mean, that, that's the raddest thing about Tom. Like, you could tell he was doing everything, you know, for the fun of skateboarding, you know, not for no, like, magazines or no, like, fame or money or any of that stuff. Like, you know, that's what made him look so bloody natural and, and everything, you know. Like, he, he did everything for himself, you know. He's in his own little penny world, doing his own own thing. You know, he'd go to contests and he'd just, he'd just be cruising around, just, like, milling about. And, you know, that's what made him so rad, you know. Like, he'd go to places and just blow everyone's mind and he wouldn't even know it, he was just relaxing, just, you know, taking the time, just pissing about and doing whatever the hell he wanted, that's what made him a king. I mean, he had enough, he had enough of people just coming up to him and just telling him, you know, he was the shit and everything, he was the best skateboarder, like, he didn't, he didn't want to hear that, that's not what got him out, you know, like, he was just down for skateboarding, just, you know, pure skateboarder, that's what he enjoyed. You know, and that, that's why it seemed like he dropped off the face of the earth, you know. He's, throughout the whole time he's been skateboarding, he's just been ruling, you know. He just didn't care about the whole, you know, I'm the raddest, I'm this, I'm that, you know. Like, he didn't care about it, and that's why he left California and moved away for a while. Just so he could enjoy his skateboarding and, and do what he wanted.
I live in Vancouver, Canada. I've been all over the world, and I think for me that this is the best place to live. Plus, I think it's a great place to raise kids. And I happen to have a beautiful daughter named Kalia, and she's the best. But the only problem here is it rains a lot. It rains pretty much all winter, most of the fall, and a lot of the spring. So when it's raining, I can't really skate. There's no indoor parks here. So when I can't skate, I do other stuff. I like to go snowboarding up in Whistler, be in the mountains, get away from the city, hang out with my friends and have a good time. Or sometimes I'll go golfing. I like to do that a lot, but sometimes it does get a little stressful. But most of the time it's pretty fun and rewarding if you have a good game. Sink a killer putt. <laughs> but when I really have to skate, I go back to the mountains. But this time we go up in snowmobiles. And we go to our little hidden spot that we built.
Em 1976, os meus pais escolheram estar no Rio de Janeiro para o meu nascimento. E de lá nós nos mudamos para São Paulo. Atualmente, em São Paulo, existem aproximadamente 17 milhões de pessoas. Olhando para trás, ter crescido por lá foi uma escola de humildade. Eu vi muita coisa quando criança. As favelas, os meninos de rua, tudo aquilo não parecia estar certo, mas era a realidade onde eu vivia. Para o street, as ruas no Brasil são bem rústicas, e sempre parece ter algo de errado com os picos. E com isso, muitas pistas acabaram sendo construídas. E no meu caso, eu tive muita sorte de ter uma aberta apenas três quadras de casa. Era Ultra Skate Park, e a galera os Ultra Boys. A pista durou uns 4 anos e foi um dia triste, mas importante quando a rampa se foi. Porque dali em diante estaremos presos ao cimento. E cimento. Doloroso cimento. Aprender nele foi duro, pois é necessário de mais determinação do que na madeira. Mas foi uma boa estrutura para ganhar mais confiança em cima do skate. O skate é a minha vida. Quem sabe o que eu estaria fazendo se eu não tivesse pisado em cima do skate. Talvez eu poderia ter mergulhado na capoeira, como meu grande amigo Bruno fez. Ou quem sabe até ter virado um playboy em Ipanema. Mas sinceramente acho que não teria dado certo não. Sou skatista, rapaz.
was born in Bangkok, but I didn't get a chance to grow up there because my family moved to California when I was about eight months old. So I didn't really know what Thailand was like until I went back. I've always had this image of Bangkok being this sort of traditional Thai city, which is the case when you walk through the historic district where all the old temples are that are strictly dedicated to Buddha. But if you go to the east side of the city, there's a big contrast. You've got huge skyscrapers, sky trains, insane traffic, which causes so much pollution that people wear surgical masks just so they don't have to breathe in that garbage. With every modern city, you can usually find skate spots, and the ones we found were really good, but of course there were security guards there. All we did was told them we were there to do work, and gave them a little bit of money, which barely equaled two US dollars, and they let us skate, even for beer and cigarettes. It's, it's crazy because that would never happen in the US. Even with all the good spots we found, I didn't see that many skaters. And it makes me think that if I would have grown up in Thailand, chances are I probably would have never skated. So I could have ended up doing other things, like training to be a champion Thai kickboxer, or maybe even a Buddhist monk. Who knows? But no, I don't think so.